Good morning, students. In today's lecture, we are going to learn about the principle of operation of a three-phase induction motor. Now, consider a three-phase stator winding energized from a three-phase supply. As explained earlier, a rotating magnetic field is produced running at a synchronous speed ns that is given as 120f by p where f is the supply frequency and p is the number of stator poles. As soon as the supply is switched on, you can uh, see the three uh, phase flux revolving in the air gap. Here the diagram shown as stator. Uh, in the stator, you can see the slots to have the winding. The external it is stator, inside it is the rotor is uh, given. So, rotating flux is shown here. In the rotor, when the rotor rotates, the flux so it will be rotated the rotating flux uh, like in the uh, rotor three phase give a supply is given to the recent rotor the flow of current through the rotor conductors the rotation of the rotor in the direction of the three phase flux but with a difference in speed between them indicating the slip speed when their speeds become equal the rotor should tend to stop rotating indicating the zero slip Consider a portion of a three-phase induction motor as shown, which is a representative in nature. The rotating field crosses the air gap and cuts the initially stationary rotor conductors. Due to the relative speed between the rotating magnetic field and the initially stationary rotor, EMF is induced in the rotor conductor in accordance with the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. The current, fl current flows in the rotor conductors as the rotor circuit is short-circuited. Now, now the situation is similar to that of a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field. Hence the rotor conductor experiences a mechanical force which eventually leads to a production of a torque. This torque tends to move the rot rotor in the same direction as that of the rotating magnetic field. Slip of an induction motor. Concept of a slip. According to Lenz's law, the direction of the rotor current will be such that they tend to oppose the cast producing it. The cast producing the rotor current is the relative speed between the rotating field and the stationary rotor. Hence, to reduce the relative speed, the rotor starts running in the same direction as that of the stator field and tries to catch it. In practice, the rotor can never reach the speed of the rotating magnetic field produced by the stator. This is because if the rotor speed equals the synchronous speed, then there is a no relative speed between the rotating field and the rotor. This makes the rotor current to zero and hence no torque is produced and the rotor will tend to remain stationary. In practice, windage and friction losses cause the rotor to slow down. Hence, the rotor speed is always less than the stator field ns thus the induction motor cannot run with zero slip the frequency of the rotor current f for the frequency of the rotor current is given as s in tf s is nothing but the slip the difference between the synchronous speed of the rotating stator field and the actual rotor speed is known as slip speed slip speed is equal to ns minus n depends upon the load of the motor if it is apparent that the motor speed is n is equal to n S yes, into 1 minus S, yes. the percentage of slip can be given as Ns minus N by Ns into 1000. Note, in induction motor, the slip ranges from 2 percentage to 4 percentage. Frequency of the rotor induced EMF and the frequency of the supply given to the stator. The frequency of rotor current. When the rotor is standstill, the frequency of the rotor current is same as the supply frequency. However, when there is a relative speed between the rotor and the stator field, the frequency of the induced voltage and hence the current in the rotor varies with the rotor speed that is slip. Let any speed n of the rotor, the frequency of the rotor current be f. ns minus n is equal to 120f by p and also ns is equal to 120f by p. Dividing the first one by second we will get it as ns minus n by ns is equal to s. F by F. Hence the frequency of the rotor current may be obtained by multiplying the supply frequency by the fractional slip. So write the application of a scroll cage and split, split uh, a slip ring motor. The application, the scroll cage type of motors having the moderate starting torque and the constant speed characteristics 
are widely used in squirrel cage induction motors or simple drug construction are relatively cheap and require little maintenance hence squirrel cage induction motors are preferred to most of the industrial applications such as lathe drilling machine agricultural industrial pump industrial drive printing machines grinders driving fans blowers slipping induction motor slipping induction motor when compared to squirrel cage motors have high starting torque smooth acceleration under heavy loads adjustable speed and good running characteristics they are used in lift cranes conveyors elevators and hoist compressor now we will see what is the necessity of a starter in a three phase induction motor in a three phase motor of a higher rating is switched on directly from the mains heat draws a starting current of 4 to 7 times the normal working current this will cause a drop of voltage affecting the performance of other loads connected to the mains hence the starters are used to limit the initial current drawn by the three phase induction motor the starting current is limited we apply reduce voltage in case of the squirrel cage type induction motor and by increasing the impedance of the motor circuit in case of the slip ring in type induction motor this can be achieved by the following methods that is star delta or the auto transformer or the soft starter in the star delta starter the star delta starter is used to scroll cage induction motor where the stator winding is delta connected during the normal running condition the two ends of the each face of the stator winding was are drawn and connected to the starter terminals as shown in the diagram So three phase supply is given to the stator and also to the starter the star delta starter the delta terminals of the stator from the stator to the star terminal of the starter when the switch is closed on the starter start side the winding is to be shown connected in star the current i is equal to 1 by 3 times the direct switching Reduction in voltage by 1 by root 3 times that is V0 will be supplied by 1 by root 3 when the switch is closed on the delta run side the winding to be shown connected in delta so application of the normal voltage here now so the normal current will flow during the starting the starter the switch is uh, thrown to the star start in this position the stator winding is connected in star fashion so the voltage per phase is 1 by root 3 of the supply voltage this will limit the current at the starting of the uh, 1 by 3 of the value drawn during the direct switching when the motor accelerates the accelerates the starter switch is thrown on to the delta run side so in this position the stator winding gets connected to the uh, normal fashion and the motor draws the normal rated current thank you guys for watching